Hello Zero K fans, welcome to Nanaliz at Dawn, this is Shadow Fury 333 with some exhibition matches in preparation for Saturday's 2G tournament. This coming Saturday at noon UTC, two hours later than usual, so for those of you in Pacific North America, it is 5am rather than 3am, such as me. Eastern goes like 8am, so it helps North American players, hurts Australian players a little. I don't know if that's going to be a permanent time, but it does mean we're going to have to reschedule some... Well, not reschedule necessarily, but bear that in mind when it comes to scheduling Saturday activities. Incidentally, I may only be able to cast about three and a half hours of that on account of having scheduled something for about 10 in the morning for me, which is only a few hours later. But that's weird exceptional case. Anyhow, on to this game. So this game is going to be... Hokomoko and El Torero versus Aquanim and Drone on Onyx Cauldron, one of my favorite maps that I haven't actually played or seen in a while, but it is one of my favorite maps because it offers a lot of really interesting ways of approaching. You can either go through this risky but direct area. Obviously, players will want to take this sort of southwest section with all the metal extractors and the nice choke points in the way, but then, of course, dealing with those choke points and dealing with the elevation shifts within this area is tricky. I have to pay some attention to that. Or you can go to the northeast, which is fairly defensible, but especially if people go for Amphibs or Hovercraft, it becomes a lot easier to actually take out. So typically speaking, what you'll see is players will gravitate towards the southwest, while also trying to take the northeast, but the northeast, like I said, is a little bit easier to break if you have water passing. Let's see what we've gone for. We have Amphib from Hokomoko, because of course we do. El Torero is going for Cloaky. Hover from Aquanim and Cloaky for Drone, which is unusual. Hokomoko's use of Amphib is, that makes sense. I mean, it's, like I said, the north side is the one that water pathing really helps on. Aquanim going for Hovercraft, it's not that big of a deal because there is one choke point. I mean, basically, they're going to have to cross over a bit. Like, Drone's Cloaky Bot's the ones that are going to have an easier time dealing with the southwest, while, while Aquanim's Hovercrafts are going to be the ones most suited to deal with the northeast. Overall, though, at this point, just opening scout moves, nothing particularly meaningful right now. Both players just trying to figure, or both teams, rather, just trying to figure out where the others are up to. And I believe all the factories have effectively been revealed at this point. Well, they certainly have now. So all players aware of what everyone else is using. Not sure if they're aware of the relative positions, but I seriously doubt that's going to become a big deal. What is going to be, be, what is going to be a big deal, however, is that Drone is actually the one taking the northeast more. While well, Aquanim is shifting towards the southwest, which, while Drone is sending some construction over the southwest, will be a little bit hard for Aquanim to defend their commander. So at this point, we are looking at true teamwork here, as Aquanim is Aquanim needs to defend Drone's commander and vice versa. On the other hand, the GBC side, which is kind of impromptu clan, it's not really clan wars, but it just so happens that they are on opposite clan sides. El Torero is the one going El Torero. El Torero is the one going over to the southwest. While Hokomoko goes over to the north, which makes sense. That's, like I said, water pathing. That's all perfectly valid here. Makes perfect sense. So anyway. With... <sighs> Sorry, I've... Anyway, with, yeah, with GBC, so GBC is starting to take the south side a bit more aggressively. What am I saying? No, it's Recursion that's doing it. Drone and Akron are taking the south side a bit more aggressively. El Torero is the only one who's actually, El Torero, why can't I pronounce that properly? El Torero is the only one who's actually taking that with any effort. And actually, at this point, their commander is under great risk. Not much is coming in here. There is a nice tick for protection, but that's not going to be much. Not with a scalpel coming in, because we are dealing with hovercraft. Therefore, we are dealing with scalpels. Use that to make a nice circle strike on the commander, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. The commander is moderately well protected. It looks like... Is that the tick? No, just a glaive. Oh. Oh, there's the tick. Okay. That's where it is. And it looks like... It looks like GBC is actually taking the north side fairly well. Recursion has not taken that at all. They're relying a lot more on it. On, on expanding to the south, and it looks possibly a bit more like they're relying on overdrive. Though it would appear at this point that 
GBC is the side actually getting all the overdrive. Recursion has not managed to do so yet. El Torado's commander under great risk, though. And at this point, not the biggest deal. I mean, 33, 34 metal coming in. That'd be a loss of 4 metal out of that, which isn't nothing, but it's not the biggest deal. It's more a question of construction position. Losing El Torero, losing their commander there is going to be a bit of a problem because that would mean they would have a harder time building up all of these metal extractors. There are no other con there are no other constructors here. That's it. The commander and nothing else. Although El Torero is coming in with glaives, that should be a bit more effective at dealing with this. And ticks over here because why not? Bit of scouting, bit of stunning if necessary. Should be able to stun out this constructor, no problem. But that would be a waste. And indeed, it is just resting there. But now Akinem is fully aware of this. Akinem and Drone are fully aware of that. Whereas with the North... Well, yeah, GBC's got this. And as I mentioned before, I think last Saturday I did a game on Vitra showcasing Cloaky versus Amphib. And showing that with the Amphib versus Cloaky matchup, Cloaky is better off with Glaives against Ducks than they are with Warriors. I mean, Warriors are, of course, useful. They just don't have that range advantage. The Ducks actually have... Maybe not a bit of range on them, but they certainly have the ability to just fire and leave, making it harder for the Warriors to get in. And also, the high alpha of the Ducks means the Warriors can hardly get any shots up before the Ducks get, just kill them. Ducks act kind of like skirmishers in that matchup, rather than like raiders. And it looks like El Torero does have a... Well, not really a position, but they are trying to push a position. And there we go! El Torero should be able to at least push out a little bit more, but even this, I don't think is going to be enough. I'm pretty sure that these... Six seconds left here. Yeah, this is not going to be. This is not going to work. El Torero is still not going to be in a position where they can actually conquer this. Good tick use, though. That was a nice tick, but they're still not in a strong enough position to be able to take this. Although these dozen glaives, hmm, a dozen glaives against all of these daggers. That's really going to come down to positioning, like how they position the line move, all that stuff. That's going to come down to that, and it's not going to be. That's not going to be something to worry about. I don't think. I mean, there are enough daggers, as long as the daggers are in a good position, and enough defensive tools. The only downside is that at this point, El Torero can actually build up. Like, El, Tor El Torero... I'm gonna get that someday. El Torero has the has the units there to threaten. And both players kind of do, so both players are in a bit of a stalemate. It's really gonna come down to who's able to build up the defenses a bit faster along the side, in case they get attacked. Whereas the north side, GBC kind of has that. Hokumoku's just taking it. They aren't even really worried about anything. Drones also going for a little bit more, but... Yeah. Like I said, the Warriors are... They're okay. But they aren't great. And Scythe for scout... Well, probably not meant for scouting, but still, that's all they're really ever going to do. That was unfortunate. That Scythe did not mean to just scout. That wanted to attack something. And there we go. There's that tick going off. There's that tick being useful. And the north side, not much happening. So it looks like the recursion side wants to take that straightforward path, wants to go for the short rush distance instead, avoid the southwest. It looks like they will have still a bit of a beachhead there. They're not going to have to worry too much about positioning yet. Most of the mexes are pretty much unclaimable, though these two are basically El Torero's. El Torero. These are basically El Torero's. This is kind of El Torero, and these are unclaimable at this point. And that's what the scythe wanted to do. There we go. See what's going on, see if there's any fusions around here, which at this point it would almost stand to reason there would be, but there aren't. And gunship switch from drone, no other factory switches thus far. And it looks like we are gonna get an attack coming in here. This scythe confident while at the same time. Ducks getting rid of everything trying to attack. And nice another nice tick for El Torero. While the scythe able to deal meaningful damage here. Get rid of energy. Oh, it's not quite meaningful yet. 54 energy left. Ooh, that friendly fire. That must have hurt. So a bit of damage dealt, not a huge amount, and more ticks. El Torero is showing they know how to do their tick usage. That is... that is very impressive. I, bet, I mean, that first one didn't work out too well, but the subsequent ones have been very useful. I can with the air switch, but I don't know how effective that's going to be overall. But the penetrator about to die. Good Faraday positioning, though. So the Penetrator is not going to die thanks to the Faraday. EMPs all around. EMPs are basically saving everything for everybody right now. So at this stage, I'd say GBC still has 
they have a position advantage, but economically you can see that it is turning into Recursion's favor. So GBC right now can take advantage of that by way of Reclaim, as they are somewhat. El Terrero has taken a bit of Reclaim here. Quite a lot, actually. Hokomoko doesn't appear to be. Hokomoko is much more focused on the static economy. And does have a nice cut in point. These ducks able to get in through this through this middle section here. No defenses up here for the island expansion, or I think it's kind of island expansion. For the Isthmus expansion here. The ducks having whatever angle of attack they want on this thing. Although the rapiers. That was good timing of the rapiers. That was absolutely necessary for defense. And Akuna's air plant is up. And we're going to see Stunning Out. Probably going to be used to Stun Out. Well, these forces will be dead by the time they come in. This force of ducks, if they're aware of it, which I don't believe they are. No, they had no radar in the area, so they aren't aware of these ducks coming through the center pond. Or center lake, really. They are. This looks kind of small when you zoomed out. The center lake. To be put, put it more accurately. And the center lake ducks are actually not that effective from the looks of it. The halberd's tanking that just fine, well, which allows the duck, well, allows the rapiers and that mace to get rid of everything. So the ducks getting rid of one or two halberds, but losing all of their number. So at this point, recursion, as long as they can, if they can have a few trades like that, they should be fine. I mean, El Torero has been pretty good when it comes to making sure they use their ticks well and make sure they keep their forces in a good position. But Hokomoko at this point, losing all those ducks was not good. I mean, as you can see, it's given Drone a lot of confidence just moving their rapiers around taking care of these expansions, and being able to take the north side completely. Like they're fully confident they can do that. Because why wouldn't they be? They just got rid of a massive army. Not to mention they are able to eat that massive army for extra money. Not to mention, again, they have more than enough energy to do that with. Although at this point, it's not really a problem for either side. Energy isn't a limitation for either side right now. A good napalm bomb into the main base could actually tear that apart, though. Could get rid of a lot of these wind generators, and that would be devastating. Yeah, Drones Commander able to push back, and the north side is starting to break. GBC's forces trying to cut through the center, trying to distract from the north side, but unfortunately those ducks, once again, are taking heavy losses, which is not going to be what they want. Of course, I say that right as they shoot down a rapier, so maybe I'm not exactly right about that. The maces are actually a little bit out of position, wanting to deal a bit more with the rapiers. And yes, it does appear that overall... Akunum was the one going towards the area that Drone would have been better suited for, and vice versa, but... It's going to come down to holding off this attack. Recursion has had an economic advantage in most of this game, so... If they can set up even trades, that's favorable. Like, even trades are good right now, which is kind of surprising. So, I'm going to turn that setting off. So yeah, even trades are actually a good thing for them. Surprising though it may sound, just because they have the economy for it. Of course, if they lose too much economy in the process, that would be a problem. Losing several wind generators and a massive... O okay, they probably should put a pile on there, actually, just for insurance sake. Because that was a lot of overdrive. They just, well, reduced. Actually, no, it's not that big of a deal. Never mind. There's enough energy. It's not going to be that big of a problem. Just because, yeah, the connection is lost. But they have more than enough energy. It doesn't matter. They aren't relying on small differences in grid power. Both grids have a lot of energy. That was about a split in half. So it makes no difference. As you can see from the grid colors, it really doesn't make a difference. The grids are still effectively synchronized, even though they aren't connected. Because neither of them is maxing out. There just isn't enough energy for them to max out. But there's enough energy for them to be effective. So anyway, at the same time, the southwest side, Akronim managing to take pretty much everything on that El Torero had. El Torero forced to fall back, and Thunderbird over the north side to get... That's Hokomoko's horse down, that's everything. That looks like Drone will be able to just break... They'll probably, once again, have enough confidence. Break through here. Yet, with Akronim's help, they're going to break through here. They're going to break through this area as well. There's nothing in the way. There's a Lotus. That's about it. I mean, while GBC has taken that center fairly strongly, Recursion just has... They just have a lot in position to deal with pretty much anything that comes at them. I mean, with the rapiers and the thunderbirds just stun at any force that comes up, like this one for instance. And the rapiers just tearing apart the economy, and the energy economy for GBC is about to tank. Like, it's going to tank right now. Actually, the entire economy is going to tank right now. Drones, rapiers, half a dozen rapiers are going to be the ones that are going to close out this game, most likely. The only problem is this direct assault. That 
a lot of forces were kind of out of position. They were expecting an assault along the side, along to the north. Not a direct main base assault, and GBC might be able to take advantage of that. That could turn this around, but even then these rapiers... Actually, these rapiers aren't doing as well as I thought they would. Not going for the wind generators, going instead for the caretakers, which is good. That will stall production. But at this point, they don't know that GBC doesn't have enough metal for that to matter. So at this point, GBC actually might be able to turn this around, tearing apart the main base, if they're able to do so. Unfortunately, the Glaive is fighting against the Warriors, and not the Ducks, meaning that the Ducks don't have that advantage. And the, whoops, and the Glaives do lose to the Warriors, as expected. Nice Thunderbird use there. Def a little bit too late, but that still will work. And this is what I meant. The north side is falling apart. GBC is getting surrounded now on all sides. That, that center attack was basically their one last-ditch effort. And with that done, with that gone, the game's over. Like, this is over. They're going to be surrounded from the north. But they hit from the north. They lost all their ground in the southwest. I mean, El Torero just... El Torero... El Torero just left. Well, half left. He retreated a bit. And, of course, they lost metal extractors. But yeah, they basically just left. So at this point, Drone and Aquanim are going to be doing pretty well right now. That's, yeah, that's it. GBC side throwing in the towel, and that is game. So despite the fact that they had gone in kind of the wrong way as far as pathing is concerned, Recursion did end up taking that. Warzone paused. I mean, in large part, they just had a really good position here. I mean, El Torero could not assault that. And while, and the north side, once again, was kind of split in half. I think if Hokumoko hadn't lost those ducks, managed to really ball them up, get a lot of them, and spread them along multiple fronts, they might have been able to do well, but honestly, I just think the ducks were a bad idea. Boys would have probably been a better idea in that case, with all the units that they were fighting against, and... against the rapiers, anglers. Like, anglers in the lake? On top of elsewhere? That would have really stopped those rapiers from attacking. But anyway, that... that was how that one was have another for you guys in just a moment. It will be actually a cup... Oh, sheesh, that's long. Maybe not. Hmm. What do I want to do? I had a couple lined up, but I realized they're going to be extremely long, and I'd like to actually go to bed at a reasonable time tonight. Okay, well, I'll do one of them. So it'll be Ivan D and Acronym versus Snuggle Base and Kane on Desert Needle Small. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.